number 31 of the 48 ways is ohev et hamakom. Ohev means to love. Et hamakom means love the place. You get that one? Love the place. Love the spot. Love the space. Love this place. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. So the definition for love, because when we say love someone, we tell you what to do. First define. Know what you want to do. Love is an emotion. Love is a pleasurable emotion. Right? Check it out. Don't, don't trust me. What gives us that pleasure? It's in Judaism we say, and you focus, check it out. Love is an emotion of pleasure that we all, every human being, will necessarily have when he sees, when he notices, understands, appreciates beauty, meaning, power. You see virtue, and you identify with that virtue, you must have this pleasure which we call love. So to show you that this is so, so the easiest love that human beings feel, and most of us will feel it, is love of children. If you ask a father, you love your son, he says, sure. What do you love about him? I say, well, he's full of life, he's intelligent, he understands, he's kind, he's... All the virtues he can think of, he'll mention to you. So you say, well, isn't it true that he has... uh, uh, he's a hypochondriac, he's always sick, he's always, you know, you can't say, yeah, I love him, the hypochondriac. But they don't come out. So you say, well, you know, he was sickly as a child. You excuse his fault and you identify him with his virtue. What do they love? They love your intelligence, your honesty, the beauty of your movements, your grace. Well, they'll, they'll find something to love in any critter. Yeah? Is that right? Okay, so love is taking pleasure in that beauty virtue. So love the place means take pleasure in the beauty virtue and in the grace and in the the power of the place. Now, what's the place? Anybody got an idea? What's the place? See, this is this is how far we are from Jewish consciousness. But every one of you has read the Haggadah, yeah, the Passover. Most of you have, right? Baruch HaMokim Baruch Hu. Blessed be the place, blessed be He. Yeah. You know who we refer to? You see, if I say to you, who's the Almighty? The All-Knowing, the Merciful One, the All-Powerful. You know who I'm talking about. The place is God. Why do we call God the place? Because the Jewish concept of God is the world is not his place. The universe is not his place. It's not that God is in the universe. God transcends the universe, transcends time. He is the place of the universe. The universe is not his place. God created space. God transcends space. Space is not where God is. Space is... In God, not God is in space. Does that make sense? That's the Jewish concept, which is Echot, which is the hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. There is nothing else. And that's a little spacey. <laughs> that's a little, you know, it takes a little doing. You got a nation of philosophers. Yeah. So what does love the space mean? Love the place? It means love God. Now why did the rabbis choose that term? We have in the Mishnah, we use the word Horachamon, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Arkel HaGodol. We, we call them all kinds of names. But you've got to realize that when the rabbis use a description of God, they use it intelligently. When they say love the place, they're saying love God up until his transcendental nature. So love the place means that if you want to live, you've got to learn to take pleasure in the beauty, the power, the wisdom, the meaning that is our creator. Not until you know how to love the place do you really know what pleasure is about. That's what the Jewish people say. Love the place. All of the rest of pleasures are peanuts. Hmm? Do we have a sense that it might be true? If you could love God, if you can see that virtue, if you can... Um, so let's see. Let's look into it. How do we go about it? 
So number one of how to go about it is let's take a few steps. The first step is, number one is take a few steps, A, B, C, D. The first step, please focus your attention on the fact that we are all instinctively, this is the, our nature, we're thirsty and looking for the transcendental experience. We want something that will do it, something that will last, something that will change us, something that will... Uh, Maybe when I turn the next corner, if I go to France, they speak French, who knows? Maybe that's where I will have the, the experience. Huh? Or if I, if I get to a, a good piece of music, or who knows where will it be? Star Wars. <laughs> huh? You see that? We're looking for that something, that, that magic, that transcendental, that mystery, that something. There's something we're looking for. We don't know what it is, right? But it's there. We're looking for it. It's not the mundane. The second step is pay attention to the fact that every one of us, now there might be some people will differ, but according to the surveys we've made, 97% of our visitors will acknowledge the fact that they really believe in a creator. So don't be ashamed to yourself. You know, you don't even have to say it. Yeah? But all of us really believe that there is a creator, a force. You see, Star Wars, a force, right? We won't, we won't call him a creator. No, that's too Jewish. <laughs> right? The force. All right, so take it a third step. And the third step is that... Even an atheist, even a guy who denies it. No, there's no such thing. There's a force that's baloney. No, 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 no. But even an atheist knows that if you could be in touch with your creator, that would be a transcendental experience. Hmm. That would be it. You say to a guy who's traveling through Europe, Romania, Bulgaria, he's been traveling for five years. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the experience. What? It. Come into this room over here and you can talk to God Almighty himself. Doesn't want to go in there, yeah? But man, that would be it. Is that right? We all recognize, even an atheist will recognize, if I could see God, if I could feel him, if I would be in touch with him, <laughs> that's it. It's the transcendental experience itself. Therefore, D is, take a look at this, my friends, connect it. You're looking for that experience, not mundane. You're thirsty for it. You're longing. You know that there's a creator, and you know that that would be it. That's what you're looking for. Now it's a little more real that that's what I would want for my son, right? That transcendental experience. Ah, uh-huh. that would be it. But number two is take note and focus You've had the transcendental experience. You've touched God. Anybody remember when? In this life. At the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon? A spring evening at the wall. Leaves dripping after a rain in the summer. A babbling brook. The ascetic experience. A piece of majestic music. When that longing was there, you're transfixed. You've had it. You've been there. But it was a second. It was gone. But it hits like a a ton of bricks. It's there. It's heavy. It's transcendental. Yeah. How can we have the same feeling for something created by man, such as music, and such as something created by God, such as the Grand Canyon? See, I mean, that's a good question. How can we have awe for something created by, by man? Yeah? And, and it could be awesome is, is in many ways, uh, the 747 is awesome. But really, it's man's expressing the power of God. The prophet, King David, says, When I look at the heavens and I see your handiwork, and I say, What is man? that you should take note of him. And yet you made him but a little less than God. 
We can move steel through. We are. Who are we? What is our power? Expression of God. Number three is that take note and focus that in your life, you're longing for it, and yet you found it. You see, we just said, number one is we're longing. We're all waiting for it to happen. Yeah? And yet you found it. <laughs> Connect yourself. You know what to do. Do it intelligently. Use your head. How do you get this ascetic experience as a constant beauty of life? Of walking with pleasure, with the ascetic experience. Now, artists think they have it. They don't. You all know the contempt that artists, bohemian artists have for you, gray flannel, success-oriented, robot. <laughs> you never heard that one? No? And is there an artist in the audience? No, no, no true artist here. He would tell you. He'll give it to you. What are you looking for? A normal, gray, meaningless existence. Punching clocks. Robots. The creative feeling. The ascetic. That's where life is really is. And now you understand that. See? Dumbbells. You know that the, you're going to go and pay for these works of art and, and talk about it. They say, hey, friend, <laughs> we got it. Ah, they're making a mistake too. <laughs> Friends, it's yours. Just work at it intelligently. Just go and find out how to see God day in, day out. Walk with him. Feel his presence. Take him seriously. Walk with him. It's the ascetic experience. Intelligently. Do you understand what I'm saying? Learn how to do it. So you say, where am I going to learn? We're an old eminent firm. We've been in the business 3,500 years. We introduced God to the world. Yeah? They still don't understand the place. <laughs> you know, they understand the merciful one. All right, being of this is, I just want uh, to focus you. Yeah, that, look, you realize that to get the pleasure of, of playing tennis, you're willing to invest. Invest in tennis lessons, time, drill, and practice. How about that ultimate pleasure? You know, if you wish for your son, either it works in one shot or forget it. Or you're willing, how much are you willing to invest for that? Huh? All right, number four is, so now that we've got you a little motivated, let's clarify the goal. What's the goal again? Love is pleasure. Your goal is to have pleasure. What pleasure? To see, understand, beauty, virtue. Understand the beauty, virtue of what? The transcendental. That means the ultimate beauty, the ultimate power, the ultimate, get the ultimate kick. Yeah? That's the only. All right, is that clear? All right, so number five is that in Jewish consciousness, we used to say, and Jewish consciousness means that every Jew used to understand this. They used to understand, not necessarily that they did it, not understand, but this is what they were brought up. This was like, like today, Western consciousness is that uh, peace is a good thing. Yeah? 500 years ago, 200 years ago, war was the ultimate expression of man's greatness. Did you know that? <laughs> you know, so things have changed. 300 years ago, that's what the elite were teaching their kids. Yeah? A knight, to be a knight errant. Dueling. Yeah? Using the mace and the lance. <laughs> Boom. That was quality living. Huh? Today, no. No, it's peace. Yeah? This is consciousness of today. Jewish consciousness was always the same. Jewish consciousness was that on the one hand, the way to get to the love of God is to ask yourself and to define and redefine and redefine and refine it. What are you living for? What do you want out of life? Every night before you go to sleep, ask yourself, where are you standing now? What do you want? I want meaning. I want to be good. I want power. I want... What does that mean? I want fame. What do you want? What is fame? That people should think I'm great. What's the difference to you what people think? I want to feel great. So if you're great, will you feel great? Yeah. I want to be great. That would be good. Don't need to have people. Okay, what is great? Refine it. Define it. What is great? Do something godly. That's great. 
Oh, you want to be a little... Refine, define, go from what you want, know yourself, know God. And on the other hand, same Jewish conscience has said, repeat your goal every day. Know what the answer is, what you really want, and study it. And what is that? Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Love him with all your desire. You get that? With everything you desire, love him. Take pleasure in him with all your desire, with your life, all your life, with all your possessions. You get that? It's on the mezuzah. It's on our tefillin. We repeat in the morning. We repeat it at night. So, in Jewish consciousness, we go from both sides. Know yourself, you know what you want. You know what you want, you'll know yourself. Maybe between the both of them, <laughs> you meet. And it, it hits you. Yeah? That's Jewish consciousness. So, Number six is, then let's take a look at this Kriyashma, this paragraph, because that paragraph is telling us the three steps, even in the pleasure of love of God. And it's telling us how to get there. It says, V'yohafta, there are three. V'yohafta, Sashem Elokecha, you shall love the Lord, your God, the Lord, and <laughs> that's not a translation, Yudke Vovke means the eternal, the infinite, the place. Your God means who protects you, who's with you in every moment. <clears throat> it's a little different focus, yeah? Love, take pleasure in the Lord your God with all your desire, with everything you desire. Which means what? Realize that's all you desire. No, this is all you desire out of life. You desire to transcendent. With all your life. What is with all your life? All the meaning that there is. All of the kavod. You will and die for. What do you will and die for? Something heavy. An accomplishment. Love. That's love. And with all your possessions, what does all the possessions mean? With all the gifts, with gratitude. All the gifts. Give a gift, and you're loved. Love him because of the gifts that he gives you. These are the three categories. The lowest is gifts. So number seven is, let's examine how do we love God for his gifts. You see, people, you give a gift, you're doing something. You give a gift, it doesn't matter. It's a little, but it's for the person, something he can use, something that he wants. He just got a gift yesterday. Fantabulous. A ah, little dictaphone for a, uh, at night. And I think of all the things I got to tell the secretary, bing, bang, bong. Good morning, I give it to her. Fantastic. I, uh, I can't tell you how much I love the guy. <laughs> gave it to me. Yeah. A gift buys people's souls, right? It's consideration. It's for you. It's for your pleasure. It, and it's helpful. Is that right? Bring your wife gifts. No, 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 not tokens, but gifts. So how do we love the Almighty for a gift? So A of this is realize it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful world. It's wonderful to be able to move your hands and your feet. It's not an accident. It's a gift. Specially packaged for you. Isn't that nice of him? You got it? Appreciate what he gives us for nothing. The Almighty envelops us with gifts all the time. Appreciate this. Anybody who showers you with gifts, all right, you, you don't, you're not aware, but what about if somebody comes driving up? What's your name? Eric, somebody comes driving up, brand new Cadillac, okay? Five years supply of gas, right? Five years supply, guaranteed, they'll bring it to your door and they'll fill it up every day, you know? A tanker comes, zzz, 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 follows you down the highway, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, all right, you know? And he gives it to you, a gift from Mr. So-and-so. Would you like to meet the gentleman? Why, he's a wonderful guy. How do you know? I don't know, but he's a wonderful guy. Yeah? Realize, that's the way it is. You almighty know string. Here it is. Doesn't make you the sign. Right? And look, hands and feet. If you were blind and somebody gave you eyes, would you like to meet the guy? Mm. So, enjoy knowing that he loves you. Enjoy knowing that he gave you gifts. Gratitude. B of this is that in Jewish consciousness, we used to make brachot. We used to thank God. Because that's pay attention. And in the morning we say, thank God that I have eyes. Thank God that I can move. Thank God that I, I can stand. 
Thank God that I have clothing. Thank God. Because feel, feel, gifts. You eat the fruit. Thank God that he made this for me. Focus. That's the way. Remind yourself. He loves you, friend. He gave you gifts. Gratitude. He's neat. It's beautiful. See if this is. The pleasure of a gift is according to who's giving the gift. See, the very same thing. That's a token. Like, I'll give you a pen. Big deal, yeah? If Begin gave you a pen. Right now, he's, he's in good favor, right? Then you, you know... It's one of these ten cent pens. What are you hacking at China? Yeah. Baba, this is a guy from Bagan. Huh? According to the giver of the gift is the appreciation of what you have. This is the almighty creator of this universe who gives you your eyes, your digestive system, this apple for your pleasure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so number eight is that was gifts. That's Muhammad Dechla. Number eight is love. We return in Judaism, we say, we return love for love. Kamayim ponim al ponim came leave her autumn. Like a water reflects a face, that's the Pusik and Mishta, like a water reflects a face, so does the heart of man. Which means, you smile at someone, you welcome him, he smiles at you. You frown at him, you're suspicious of him, he frowns at you. You understand? So when you love someone, he has to return love. If you show him love, you see, and that's where parents make a mistake. They're showing, the kids are hearing, uh, you're stupid, you're not, they, he doesn't love me, right? But if you really appreciate and love someone, no strings attached, he's got to think you're a wonderful guy, he loves you back. So therefore, know the love of God, that God loves us, yeah? and you must love him back. So how do we know this? So A of this is the constant care. If you know that there are no accidents. There's a constant care. He's riding behind you, and you're going through the stop sign, right? And the last minute, screech! Didn't even dent the fender. Thank God. You say, wow, that was, that was a close shave, yeah? Thank God. He's, he's weird with you. He's trying to get your attention. He says, hey, don't do this again, right? That's why. Screech! How many times do you go through the stop sign without even looking? Yeah? And no screech, but one time he says, hey, come on, wake up. Yeah, wake up! Stop signs! Be responsible! Yeah? It's a screech, right? Not even a dent. Yeah? Sometimes he throws you off the road, down a mountain, you go as 50, and then one time a guy came into the city, he says, I know there's a God. I know there's a God, he says. How do you know? He says, I had a miracle. What was the miracle? He was riding with a bicycle up a mountain road. And a car swerved at him. He had no choice. He had to go off the side. I mean, there was, you know, was a narrow road. He had to go off the side. He goes off the side. A sheer drop 50 feet onto boulders. Boulders, rocks. He's looking. He's going to die. Didn't even get a scratch. This is what the guy reports to me. He didn't get a scratch. He said he just felt that God, in between the rocks, he doesn't understand. It was miraculous. God saved him. So I said to him, my, uh, my friend, I said, do you realize who shoved you off the cliff? <laughs> you get that, right? Now, why should God? <laughs> why should God shove you off the cliff to catch you? Huh? He wants to get your attention. You see that? Do you want God to shove you off the cliff to catch you? Right? To get your attention? <laughs> you want to pay attention now? Huh? Recognize that love, that constant care. He's with us. Focus that he's with us. B of this is that in Judaism we say that everything, everything that the Almighty does is for our good. So it's when you trip down the stairs and you see that it was your good, what he's telling you. He's a father. He's not throwing you down the stairs to punish you. You got the wrong God. He's throwing you down the stairs to get across a lesson which is necessary and it's worth the bruises. 
Like when your kid is running across the street and the cars are screeching, you'll run after him and it's necessary that he feels the black and blue marks for a couple of weeks so that it's into his head, don't run across the street in front of cars. That's all. The Almighty does exactly what's necessary for you if you listen to the message. And the person who sees that, feels, see if this is, realize, you see, that when you were a kid, you thought of your father and mother as being God. You wanted their approval. You were living for them, the power. You thought they were immortal. Think back when you were five, when you were six. I mean, of course it's not God, but God. Yeah? They were God. Now when we grow older, we're 20, we're 22, we still want their approval. But we've matured. We know they're mortal. We know they make mistakes, right? But you see, the Almighty gave us a father and mother for us to appreciate the love of God. That's a gift of God. If you transfer what you thought of your parents to the Almighty, our Father in Heaven, you'll have a mature view of your parents. They are a conduit for you to appreciate the love of God. Mm. Number eight is, <clears throat> number nine is that we say, with all your desire. With all your desire means, that's where, love the ineffable God, the transcendental, the place. All your desire, which means, appreciate A is, that is all that you really want. That's the essence of what you want. Sure, you want a nice car, you want power. Sure, you want fame, you want good to be like him. Sure, you want Ice cream, you want pleasure. You want to feel that life is pleasurable. That's all the essence of all we want. That's what Judaism says. The transcendental is not only beyond all these pleasures, but it is the essence of all the pleasures. The easiest to see is if you love your child or you love your father, if you love beauty, it's the beauty of God. That's the easiest, you see. Because what is it? what is beauty? What is it that my son is smart, is intelligent? It's like God. So realize that all the pleasure that we have is really essence, echot. There's nothing else. That's the Jewish concept. So B of this is that the idea is walk constantly that everything, every beauty, every pleasure that you have is a window towards God. It is the, the road of the ascetic experience. It's the road. Just focus in. You see a beautiful flower, you can you can focus it. That pleasure that you have, that moment of pleasure, can focus you into the transcendent. It's a window. See if this is that walk with him constantly, his presence. Just feeling that is feeling the transcendent. God is transcendent, infinite, eternal, beyond, more awesome than the whole of the universe, and the loving presence, transcendental experience. Number 10 is decide and resolve. This is what I want. That's what I want for my son. I want him to have that energy, that, that really that meaning, that, that ultimate quest. You see, it's too high. I want it, for us, for us, we, we focus. Listen, I want a comfortable life. Look, Rabbi, you're, you're leading me into, hey, come on, I want to get down, you know. No, you don't want to get down. That's the body you want up. But for your son, say, let him work hard. I want him to have the most, right? <laughs> let him work hard. I want him to be great. You want to be great? No, I don't mind being average. You want to be a mediocrity? Not me. Average is mediocre. Well, uh, a little better than average. You see, that's for us because we, the, the body says, come on, it's not worth it, etc. But for our son, greatness. Realize that's what we want for our son is for us. Walk with this recognition, plan and strive. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be, but you'll move yourself up. You'll do better and better and better and better. Every day you say Shema, remind yourself. Every time you see a mezuzah, remind yourself. This is what I'm living for. That's what the Almighty wants for me. That's what I want for my son. No giving up. Number 11 is to have the firm picture all the time in front of you. What you're after, that music, that lift. List the ecstatic experiences that you had. Get that longing, that desire. Search for that feeling so that 
you know, that make it as real as possible, that this is what I'm looking for, this is what I want, then you'll strive for it. Number 12 is, then you'll look for a course of study. You want a course of study, right? And that, my friend, is a issue. The Torah is instructions for living is how to get there. Kosher is just one of the ways of, of, of discipline. Of discipline. A mezuzah is to remind you. A sacrifice is how to deal with your body. It's all an instruction of how to get. The Almighty wants you to get all the way. Come to a yeshiva. Spend three months. We'll give you the instructions. You can. We'll, we'll give you a do-it-at-home course. <laughs> you can go back and go and become a lawyer and a doctor and an Indian chief. At least you know how to construct a little love of God back home. In uh, Philadelphia, yeah, Naftali. So that's all right for a college student or high school student that has time to uh, to uh, give of himself to study. What about a parent who's busy? He's asking. That's all right for a young person who can take off a year, who can take off three months. What about a man who's in the middle of business? Send for tapes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no yeshiva around. Nobody there to teach you. Send for tapes. We'll give you a home course study. If you really want it, if you try, the Almighty will send a branch of Asia Torah to your hometown. <laughs> <laughs> or someone else who's just as good as us. Come on, there's plenty of people who know. Number 13 is that one particular technique that the rabbis tell us, which is a powerful technique if you can just learn how to do it, is the Chovah Salvava says that if a human being just realizes who he really is, then he will search for God, he knows he loves God, he will pursue him all his life. What is that? Who are you? Who, the real Naftali, please stand up. The real Eric, please stand up. Is it your body or your soul? You see, we really identify with our soul. Are you living to eat or eating to live? We all identify with our soul. Nobody's going to say, I'm living to eat. The point of my life is how many chickens I'll demolish before I... Uh, even for a joke, it can't, it can't get out. So we all say, what do you take me for? Donkey, I'm eating to live. Yeah? But that's really the soul. But we live the body. So what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you searching? Are you living? So we identify with the soul. We live the body. Live the soul. Take care of your body. Don't identify with it. Feed it, take care of it, keep it happy, energize, yeah? But live the soul. Anybody who makes that identification, I'm a soul, not a body, knows that he's in love with God and he wants to know. Okay, number 14 is use as a tool for wisdom. You see, we talk about being tough, being happy, all the different things that a human being love your fellow man, right? So... If you first put yourself into the fact that I love the transcendental, I want the absolute meaning. I want to see God's creation. I want the, the ultimate pleasure. Then you will look at wisdom as a means of getting to the reality of God's creation, of your own nature, and as the avenue of finding God. Because study man, study God's deeds. Know what happiness is, you know that it's a beautiful world. Know how to take pain, you see that the Almighty created you to be tough. <laughs> you know, you're just surrounded with God. If you don't have wisdom, it's closed down. So any piece of wisdom opens your eyes, makes you aware of a world, and therefore you treasure it. A man who loves God treasures wisdom. Number 15 is, for living, walk in greatness. See, any pleasure, any time you're happy, you're more effective as a student, as a driver of a car, as a salesman, as an employer, an employee. Do, do you see that? If you're happy, you're more effective. Is that true? Yeah? Happiness is um, fifth grade pleasure. Just taking the pleasure. I mean, it could be. You can be happy with higher pleasure. But fifth grade, just saying it's a beautiful day. Just material pleasures. But pleasure is energizing. Yeah. Live with the ascetic experience. Friend, you don't get angry at your parents. You don't get angry at your kids. <laughs> you are just powerful. 
and you will do what has to be done. With grace and beauty and another touch of the love of God. Now, why? Why do we need this new religion? Why is this necessary? So number one is necessary because, look, friend, you know you're longing. If you've seen it, you're longing for something. If you don't have a definition of what you want, you can't make it. Walk into a bookstore and say, I want that book about that, 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 a name. Otherwise, you can spend the whole day there and you're not going to get the book. Is that right? Now, if you walk into life and you say, I want that something. I'm looking for it. Maybe it's around this corner here. Where is it? My friend, know what you want. You'll know how to get there. Does that make sense? If you're really longing for God, (laughs) he ain't in Paris. Jerusalem is his address. Stay here. (laughs) You see that? Know what you want, you got a chance of getting it. If you don't know what you want, mm -mm. you're not going to make it. Is this what we want? That's the greatest pleasure. That's what we want. That's what he created us for. Well, you got to know. And you got to know that's what you want, and then you make it. Number two is, when you were a kid, you played with a, you don't remember, but you played with strings. You know? I still have a, a, a three-year-old. He doesn't like strings, but you can get him into nice colored strings. Yeah? yeah. He's more into little cars. Yeah? Right? All right, so you graduated to little cars. Yeah? Little cars, zoom, zoom. But you can't go around playing with little cars today. I'll get you I'm going to America. I'll bring you back some little cars. Yeah? <laughs> Come on, you know. Right? So what do we play with? You want to see my toys? Yeah, right? There's nice toys. There's talking clocks and there's <laughs> dictaphones. And there's, ah, the pleasure. A little computer games, right? Okay, when we really grow up, you know what we play with? Well, when we're a little more mature, then we want to create a yeshiva, we want to create a business, we want to make a success, right? All right, you use it as amusement, but yeah, that isn't what you play with. Yeah. When you really grow up, you play in the big leagues, and that is the Almighty. That's when you're really grown up. That's when you have a proper perspective in living. All right, now as far as uh, an assignment... What would I ask you to do? So please, make that effort to track down five ascetic experiences that you had. You've had it, five experiences that you had, and track it down, reconstitute it, relive it. When you felt that longing, you felt the beauty, you felt the universality, the the transcendental, this is more. It goes beyond my mundane existence. Track it down. Then... If you write down those five, take it a second step and say, is that really what I'm always waiting for now? If you see that, then really say, what can I do from this lesson? What can I do to live with this, to seek it, to gain it, to gain this experience that I really want? I thank you. You have been listening to the 48 Ways to Wisdom 